M F3 ah. line. F3. Well, okay, this it, it's an old it's an old line that uh, can lead to very sharp positions, but okay, E6 is, is a very sound move. Yeah, actually, it's quite fascinating that this F3 developed to be a major system. It's it's not like just a tricky line. It's, it really is a serious test to, to the Karokan. I mean, lately, the engines have come up with a lot of, lot of ideas for both sides. It's already a big, big theoretical battle, battlefield. So, the game could well transpose into a very normal, uh, classical French after E5, Knight FD7, F4. I mean, that's... Uh, well, again, we're transposing into a French or Steinitz variation. Um, so, for example, knight c6, then f4, and so on, and, well, I mean, I think uh, Jan Christoph will be pretty happy with this opening because there's real tension in these positions, and even theoretically, um, a very reasonable way for white to play with this space advantage. Well, we, we have seen this game between uh, Harry versus uh, Magnus, yeah? And there we had exactly the same opening with the pawn on f2, however, because it happened from, from the French. And we were kind of both shocked that Harry did not play f4, but when knight f6, remember there was this, yeah. this, this moment. Now this is the classical one. Yeah, and um, this, this has a pretty good reputation for white, it has to be said. And, and so, I think Jan Christoph has what he wants on the board, which is just a very intense struggle. And, and well, Magnus understands he wants to try and open up the position while White's king is, is still in the middle. But White has his big space advantage. Yeah, look, look, look at White's moves also, I mean pawn moves. He's trying to control everything. All his pawns are on the dark squares. Yeah, e5, very typical way of trying a4 and then maybe knight e5, knight b3. Knight g3, yeah, White wants to get the bishop to d3 and then some kind of sacrifice with knight g5 might appear as well. Razor sharp position. Yeah, absolutely. And as you mentioned, the, these classical sacrifices with bishop, to, bishop d3 takes h7 and potential knight g5s are in the air. Yeah, but, but also black's very typical like cd, cd, fe and then rook takes f3 sacrifice yeah. are also there. I mean, it's... Also, uh, yeah. I mean, I feel like maybe Black will be the one who, who can strike first, but I don't know how it will work out. Well, I think Magnus has to go for it. You know, if you, if you don't, you get squashed, basically. Yeah, but at the same time, if he gets this CD, CD, FE, FE, Rook, F3, then, then I think White is in a lot of trouble because yeah. his position might just fall apart. Yeah. So now after CD, the big question is, can actually White sacrifice on H7 and then go Knight G5 check? That's that's a big question. And then Knight G5 check and counting on this FG, G, in G8, Queen H5 idea. Or Knight G5 immediately and then Bishop H7 because uh, the, the point is, how do I force the, the capture? Very interesting. Wow. That's... That looks fantastic, yeah. I think we might, we, we might be seeing this, yeah. Knight g5 on the board, exactly, that's, oh, that's fire on board. Here we go, here we go. And e6 is hanging, yeah, this is great fun. Oh, young Christoph. If he wins this, then we might have to uh, study the Armageddon rules very carefully. Um, <laughs> Knight g5, that's fantastic. So if pawn takes knight, bishop takes pawn check on h7, king takes queen h5, king goes back, the h file opens. No, but actually, I don't know, maybe after fg, just simply g is possible because g6 is really? met by rook h7. Also, I mean, so many tactical ideas, so many ideas, so many things to, to worry about with black. I, I would be concerned about the, the sack back with, with knight e5. Uh, and then the king running to, to f7 or something like that. Yeah, but how to, how to do it, yeah? Wow. I mean, 
and of course you can you can play the move f5 you know that uh, the move f5 came to my mind it allows knight c6 wow e6 played if you got the message from Tadeo that actually e6 is probably the best move in the position and now uh, knight takes e5 knight d takes e5 how's that yeah well very very tempting it's, it's a move yeah knight f8 and then bishop g4 tempo yeah knight e5 on the board that's what we've got, fantastic. Well, the players have no time to calculate, they just... They're, they're playing on instinct. Yeah, I think so, Pete. Yeah, your move, Bishop G4, only he didn't go for it. I kind of like that. If, if, it, if it's possible, it would have gained a nice... Ah, uh, but Bishop E2 was possible. Bishop G4, ah, Bishop E2. Yes, back, yeah, true. Okay. Also, uh, but okay, this is just lovely for black because okay, white's king is uh, compromised, can't really castle because of d takes is the check. The, the pawn structure is not terrible. White, I mean, black has everything that he, he dreams of. It yeah. was the reason why I, I actually wanted to start with bishop takes is 7 but probably it, it did not work. It's so difficult to find the move. Yeah, bishop d2 played. In any case, bishop g4. Yeah, okay, sure. yeah, it looks, looks fantastic. And, and White still can't castle. Yeah, and then look at this. Jan Shishtof was shaking his head like, okay, how could I miss this? So basically, Bishop D2 even backfires, but... But okay, it was such a difficult position. Yeah. No, actually, there is, there is nowhere to go. And now, after short castle, D takes his even the Bishop is hanging. So situation got just much worse. Queen g6 played, trying to stop rook e8 and hitting the bishop on g4. But queen takes b2. Maybe you've just got a castle. Oh, he played rook b1. Okay, I was going to say castle. B1. And rook e8 check. Oh, that's, that's a it. nice move. Queen takes rook, queen takes rook. Yeah, and then queen c2 pins and then d takes his rook. Yeah, good this move. Is just winning. That's an excellent move, spotted in an instant by Carlson. Yeah, Duda is shaking his head now. Yeah, incredible comeback and finally, finally it doesn't bring any success. Incredible. Yeah, King F8, I mean King F1, pardon me. Yeah, now everything, everything falls. Yeah, I'm afraid that rook on h1 is a sorry piece. I mean, this is actually, it really is hopeless uh, because Max King is safe enough here. And yeah, White's King, not to mention the pawns. The queen is beautifully placed. Now, okay, queen f7 check threatens. Knight e5 covers the f7 square and now there's a threat to play the knight in. Actually, knight f3, king f1 is not yet a mid, but queen e1, king h2, knight f3, g oh, yeah. f, queen f2 is checkmate, yeah. Yes, that's the one, yes. To the designs, Magnus wins, I mean, what a show, what a spectacle. Incredible, so Magnus just managed to hold it together, basically, at the end. He just had a little bit more energy, he can't believe it, he's shaking his head. Yeah, he's... I think sighing with relief, he realizes that he did not have his best day today. And well, I'm, I'm pleased for young Christoph that he did manage to fight back. I, I'd have, to be honest, I'd love to, to see, see him win the tournament, but well, it wasn't, wasn't to be, not on this occasion.